blue sky for my ceiling. Hear the winds lullaby come stealing. For it's there that my heart's at home. In the The song. Wake with the song. Wake with the sun. Wake with the sun. Saddle to men, cattle to ten, ready to be done. Let me live on the rain where a man. In the hills of old Wyoming, in the hills of old It's about eating time. You better pull the outfit up. You go back and tell that old get to the fork. This is her outfit, and we're doing as she says. Ma, well, sure dead set on having this territory join the Union. Some of the powers that be are just as dead set against it. All the same, I'm glad we're on Ma's side. <laughs> so am I. First, because she's right. Second, because she's Ma. to me, Timothy Meeks. I've worked hard for everything I got. When I first came here, there's nothing but cactus and rattlesnakes. I helped to build it. And I don't intend to stand around like an ambipamby nitwit. We know all that, Ma. But we still haven't any proof that Landau and Dixon are crooked. You know Jesse Dixon takes the people's gold and gives them paper for it. You know he's had Lando put in a position of authority. That's enough for me. But need we heap oil on the fire? They're very powerful. If we keep exposing their grafts and pointing out the benefits the whole territory will gain by joining the Union, the people will wake up and help support those of us who are fighting to make Wyoming a state. Well, maybe you're right. I must be going. Eddie's moving a herd of cattle. I said I'd meet him at the fork of the river. Jesse, it's come to the point where we've got to find some way of influencing public opinion. You mean uh, we should own or control some sort of publication like the Laramie Bulletin? Exactly. But on account of my political connections, I don't think it would be wise if I offered to buy. Conway, it's nice to see you in town. Is it? Yes. Uh, Mr. Landau and I were just thinking of something we'd like to discuss with you. And what have you two gentlemen devised for the benefit of the territory? Well, it's about your paper. Uh, Dixon was saying he'd like to buy you out. Buy me out? <laughs> Not the Laramie Bulletin. Not to Jesse Dixon. That paper's to print the truth. Good day, gentlemen. That old woman's beginning to annoy me. Me too. She's getting worse every day. That's why I've sent for the Cheyenne kid. He's due here any time now. He'll put a stop to her. Hurry up, Ling. My boys are so hungry. They'll be eating each other. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Me hurry. Me hungry too. None of that, Lane. That's not gentlemanly. Who wants to be a gentleman? You do. At least until after the food is served. Yes, ma'am. Uh, up the old tricks again, huh, Vicky? <laughs> You'll never grow up. Oh, go on in there. The water's fine. Oh, it is, huh? Well, if it's so fine, how about you please. going in yourself? Oh, please don't, Eddie. I might fall. Don't. No, Vicky. You're not going to fall. Ever. Well, what do you mean? One doesn't have to fall in the river to fall. He just falls. That's all. Don't you see? Uh-huh. Are you coming with the water, aren't you? It's on the way. I never saw anything like it. I should have gone after it myself. When those two get together, they can spend more time just looking at each other like, like two dying calves. Yes, ma'am. We better be going. Oh, Vicky, how about a little washing water here? Next time, why don't you get your own? Yeah, much obliged. Vic Fuller sure takes after her ma, don't she? Quiet, boy. That's a mighty tickly subject around here. You know, since you're new on the outfit, you sure you won't slip up somewhere and hurt somebody's feelings, I might as well tell you, See, Ma ain't Vicky's real mother. Then what's she done with Ma? Well, Vicky's real mother died when she was just a baby. Then her pop, he got killed right afterwards for taking his job as peace officer too serious. So you see, that left Vicky all alone. There she was a tiny little thing, and sickly too. Nobody seemed to want her. Not even her own aunt that Ma traced clear back east. So she's just been around here ever since. The only complaint that Ma's got is that Vicky wasn't a boy. <laughs> you know, Ma kind of favors boys, both little ones and big ones. I guess that's the reason she's so good and kind to homeless cowpokes like me. Yeah, she's the same way to all her cowboys. Just like an old hen with one chick. <laughs> Looks like she'd have a family of her own. Oh, she did have one. That was, oh, over 25 years ago. She married a young engineer. She was mighty happy, too. And they had a fine little boy. <laughs> well, they set out with the wagon outfit to settle the new frontier. See, I knowed all about their plans, because I, I was a wagon boss on the outfit. And Ma and me was the only ones that ever got through. Indian? No, they was whites, renegades. <laughs> Thought we had a lot of money, I reckon. Ma must have uh, crawled ten miles to a settlement to fetch back help. Well, everybody in the outfit was accounted for except Ma's little boy. What happened to him? Well, sure, we never got no trace of him. He was a great kid, too. That's Ma Conway's outfit, all right. Good thing we got here. If that old gal had gone through the pass, we'd have never collected. But she'll pay this time if she don't go through. Come on. All right, Ma. Slim. Now go easy on the spurs. I want some fat left on the cattle when we get into town. Yes, ma'am. Ezra, this is for you. You three wait here. I'll handle the old gal. You, Mark Conway? <laughs> Why, you know perfectly well I am, Ringo. What's on your mind? I just come to tell you there's a toll been put on the Platte River Pass. But well, that's been declared uh, a public trail. It's the only way we can get through. Oh, it's still an open trail, but you ranchers are going to have to pay before you can put your cattle through. Since when? Since Landau ordered it. How much? Two bucks a head. Two dollars a head? What's Lee Lando trying to do? Put us ranchers out of business? That's one of the reasons why we're fighting to have Wyoming join the Union, so we won't have to tolerate such high-powered robbery. Well, call it anything you like. But you ranchers are still going to pay two bucks a head or your cattle don't go through. That's an impossible price. Yes, and as foreman of this outfit, I'm telling you that we ain't going to pay it. Why, you old codger, 
Who asked you to butt in? They ain't nobody had that. And you better get on your horses and hightail it out of here before I get mad. Wait a minute. Don't you see that Jen ain't wearing guns? I drop those guns before somebody gets hurt. Mount up and ride. All of you. Sure can handle your guns. Where do you hail from? Cheyenne. That's the Cheyenne kid. I noticed your chuck wagon from the ridge. Figured on asking a little grub from you. I never turned a man down for something to eat in my life. Tell Ling to get the lead out of his britches and start cooking. Well, Ling's gone on ahead, Ma, but I'll do the cooking. I'll help you. Well, uh, your timing was perfect. Though we don't know yet what the results will be, we'll probably find that out when we get to the pass. Well, there's not much they can do. We got their guns. And some distance into Laramie, they'll never get there and back in time to hold you up at the pass. That's right. Much obliged for the help. If anything gets under my skin, it's a bird that's quick on the trigger when the man he was shooting at ain't wearing guns. You make it mighty plain. I ain't got much use either for a bird that don't carry a gun. Seems he don't value his life much. <laughs> that's all the way you look at it. How you take me, for instance. I believe that carrying guns can get you into more trouble than they can get you out of. That don't work for me. Supposing a bird gets under your skin, it kind of makes you mad, then what? <laughs> I guess I ain't ever been that mad, Cheyenne. Anyway, fate sort of takes care of me. I look out for myself. And I wasn't gonna let four saddle tramps cheat me out of some grub. When I'm hungry, I get mad quicker. Sit down, Sonny. Hey, Eddie. Huh? You know you shouldn't have interfered when I was just about to let Ringo have it. Oh, I sort of figured he's about to cop a sneak on you, Ezri. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I'd rather tangle with him than I would that Cheyenne kid. Well, you know that he's the worst notorious outlaw in this whole territory? Well, he just did us a good turn. Yeah, maybe so. But I wouldn't trust him as far as I could sling an ox by the tail. Got a good appetite, Sonny. Been riding hard? Mm-hmm. Anything else you need besides food? Hmm. Couldn't use a little work, could you? Work? Ranching's a pretty big business. I could use a good hand like you. You're barking up the wrong tree, ma'am. I'm on my way to a job in Laramie that's waiting for me now. Oh. Well, thanks for the grub, ma'am. I better hit south. If you're ever in need, just look me up. My name's Kate Conway. Folks all over Wyoming know me. And what do they call you? Vicky. I might be seeing you. Hello. So long. Hey, Kate. You know you just played hostess to the worst outlaw in the whole country? Oh, yes, sir. Almost every stranger's an outlaw to you. If you'd give a man more of a chance to prove his honesty, you'd find the world plump full of honest people. That's true, Ma. But Edward's not fooling about Cheyenne. I know. I just camped in there. Why, when they hear he's around, even the saloon closes up. You know what they tell me? That he can shoot both eyeballs out of a man's head before he hits the ground. Oh, I know all about his reputation. In the worst of us somewhere, there's some good. Strangely, I have a feeling down deep that kid ain't all outlaw.
I didn't hear you come in. What can I do for you? I'm Cheyenne. You sent for me. Oh. You're the Cheyenne kid, huh? Hmm. You got here sooner than I expected. I'll call Dixon. Who's Dixon? Well, he's the fellow who sent for you. He's all right. Uh, Dixon's Bank, please. He owns a bank down the street here. Uh, Dixon's Bank, Mr. Dixon. Uh, hello, Jesse. He's here. Come on over. Right. Sit down. What's on your mind, Landa? Well, to put it simply, uh, the fees and tolls and other sources of revenue for our organization are being threatened by certain obstinate people who are determined to bring statehood to this <laughs> territory of Wyoming. Now, uh, these misguided people are, uh... Like flies in your ointment? Yeah. Like flies in my ointment. And you want me to get rid of them, is that it? You understand perfectly, Cheyenne. I was just explaining to the kid here our reasons for needing his help. Have you told him about the old lady? Well, I was just getting to that. You see, kid, this is a pretty tickly situation for us. We could probably handle it ourselves if we were dealing with a man, but a woman, that makes it tough. Not only is she dead set against us, but she's one of the leaders in the campaign to have Wyoming join the Union. She also owns and publishes the Laramie Bulletin. That's been giving us a lot of grief. We've got to get rid of her fast. The rest will be easy. Uh, but it's got to be done carefully. Now, she's powerful, and she's got a lot of friends in this territory. Who is she? Her name's Kate Conway. She owns the Conway Ranch, but everyone who knows her calls her Ma. What's it worth to you? Five thousand dollars in gold as soon as the job is done. We've got a lot of reliable men working for us. You can have your pick if you need help. I got my own ways of handling things. Until I need help, I'll work alone. She offered me a job. I'm taking it. I'll tear her castle down from the inside. Look out. The roof doesn't fall down on you, too. Don't worry. Where'd I was telling you about to stop us out in the hill? It's the Cheyenne Kid. The Cheyenne Kid? Huh? Your new boss. But no buts about it. From now on, you do as he says. Well, Ma, they're all there. And a fine-looking bunch of stock, too. Don't give me any of that paper up from Dixon's bank. I want my money in gold. But it's perfectly good. And there is a gold reserve in back of it. You mean gold reserve for Jesse Dixon himself? Because he should decide to leave the country and take all the gold with him. His bank's been established a long while. He wouldn't do that. You and I differ a mite there in our opinion. All he'd have to do is change his name. And everybody holding his paper would be holding just that paper. Remember, Hodges, we ain't got the protection of the federal government behind us yet. All right, here's the gold. He the terms all right. Enough money for a whole year's supplies. With enough lever to repair the South Barn, I hope. Enough for plenty of repairs this year, Eddie. <laughs> hey, what are you dressed for, a hoochie coochie? Ah, oh, man, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's been his britches. Ah, oh, 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 fellows. Well, the only thing I got to say, Ma, is when you get him a new pair, be sure and get him big enough. <laughs> I hate to see a lad too big for his britches. <laughs> Come on, let's get up the street. Yeah. Come on. Come on. 
on our way. Now, have a heart, Kate. I just wanted a little pick-me-up. I'll give you a pick-me-up. I just... I... Remember, you're on payroll for sundown. Oh, sundown? Why, by that time, we'll be clean out to the rain. You catch on fast, don't you, Ezra? <laughs> Eddie, here's a list of the provisions. You and the boys pick them up and get them loaded. All right, boss. Slim, you go on to Kelly's and get your new britches. Remember, no pick-me-up for Ezra. I've just obtained word from the factory in the East that it'll take two years to obtain the printing to establish a publication here. That's too long. I tell you, Lee, the Laramie Bulletin's the only salvation for us, if we can just force the old woman to sell. Here she comes now. Howdy, Miss Conway. You haven't changed your mind about the newspaper, have you? Why should I? I'm on my way now to my editor with an article on the toll you put on the Platte River Pass that'll blast it wide open. It ain't legal, and you know it. You'll do nothing of the kind. And if you want to stay in the cattle business, you'll pay your toll, just like the other ranchers. And if you wish to remain healthy yourself, you'll sell that newspaper. You heard the lady. She said she didn't want to sell. I apologize for what you just said. That won't be necessary, Sonny. Apologizing won't change what's in their hearts. You suppose he'd double-cross us? Don't be foolish. <laughs> He's just putting on an act to get on the inside there. He said he'd rather work that way, didn't he? Here. I want you to put this in tomorrow's paper. Well, I can't print that. Every word of it's the truth. The rest of the ranchers should know about the toll that's been put on the pass, too, so they can fight it. There's another point in favor of the territory becoming a state of the Union. But don't you realize you're looking a wildcat right square in the face after all the threats we've had? Why, it was only a short while ago that one of Lando's men warned me to keep this paper out of politics. If that article doesn't appear on the front page, the paper will have a new editor. Ain't you a little hard on the old man? Him? I should say not. He prints things far stronger than I could ever write. Well, then why was he so dead then against printing what you wanted? He'd have printed it anyway. Lack to feel I forced the policy of the paper. Sort of relieves him of a uh, responsibility, I guess. Say, did you get that job you were coming in for? No, to tell you the truth, I didn't. Kind of disappointed, too. The offer I made you still stands. You got yourself a new hand. Lucky for you, you ain't wearing guns. It may be lucky for you. 
Oh, well. I can wait till Tuesday. Cheyenne, there's something I want you to get straight. I don't know what you've done in the past. I don't care what you do after you leave here. But as long as you're working for Ma, you're not going to do anything to hurt her. Riding the range on my old Cayuse Chasing the mavericks that's broken loose Herding the cattle while jogging along Singing my old herding song Someday I'm going to take all these songs you've written and put them into a book. That'll be great. Make a nice keepsake for you. Keepsake? Well, I was going to sell them. Sell them? Why, sure. I bet we could make a nice piece of money out of those songs. Oh. Hey, Eddie. We're going back to the ranch. We'll see you later. <laughs> That's the bag. Come on. Hey, hey. that hurt I was telling you about. Ringo, you and the boy stay here until I get Eddie and the girl out of the way. Then run that herd into the middle of the river and swim them to the fort. That way no one will ever be able to pick up the trail. I'll get you. Can you give me a hand over here? Sure, but what's wrong? The stray got himself bogged down in the gully over there. I'll need some help to get him out. Let's go. to your mama. That bullwhip comes in handy. Yeah. In more ways than one. Thanks. You must sit up late trying to think of ways to please a girl. No, it just comes natural, I guess. Especially if the girl's pretty.
brushing out never hurt anybody. You sure have a steady aim. I guess there isn't anyone who could outshoot you. Should I try? No, I never like to practice with another man's guns. He never carries his own. Maybe it's because he doesn't know how to use them. When I put my guns on, I won't be shooting at ten cans. <laughs> so, Ma, I actually believe those cattle got out in the middle of the river and drowned themselves. <laughs> she fell for the story of hook, line, and sinker. Oh, it has happened, you know. Cattle have been known to do that. Well, everything's working out just fine. Boys got rid of the cattle. I got the money in my bank. In your bank? Listen, you two. What we get for selling the old gal's cattle is gravy, see? And I want it for myself. Oh, now, Cheyenne. Be reasonable after all. Fifteen hundred's a lot of money. Dixon's just keeping it for you where it's safe. When the job's over, you'll get every penny of it. Yes, I realize you like to bide your time, but you've got to bear down on the old woman. She's got the people around here pretty well organized. You've got to stop her before she goes any further. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, Ezra. Hmm. I think I got a new song here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I wrote it for Vicky. Sort of a surprise for her. Well, let's try it out. Good idea, Eddie. All right. Now, you remember how Sage of the West goes? Yeah. yeah. Well, you hummed in that? That's right. Yeah. Well, now, when I give you the nod, you hum. Well, fine. Fine. Ho, hum, hum. <clears throat> Post. Darling, won't you hold me close While the sun is saying howdy from the sky With tears like dew upon the ground Resting in your eyes of brown and I'm rounding up my heart to try and say goodbye. My wild prairie rose, I'll be blue without you. about you night and day my heart will say it won't be long when I hear you calling you I'll be happy as a lark to be winging down the trail and join the boys. No, thanks. Never cared much for singing. I'd rather talk to you. It's a mighty fine song. It has character. 
I'm glad you like it. Vicky. Yes, Ma. Sit down. You're fast beginning to look like a young lady. Well, thank you. Your manners ain't. Oh? It's time you were throwing away your little girl toys. Well, I did that a long while ago. Oh, no, you haven't. You've just replaced them. Ma, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that you're playing with fire, pitting two men against each other. May be fun for a while, but it proved disastrous to you. Men's affections ain't to be tampered with. You mean Ed and Cheyenne, I suppose. You've got to make up your mind. But you know that it's always been sort of understood between Ed and me. Well, I've loved him since the first day he ever came to this ranch, when I was really playing with toys. And he fixed my doll's head. But there's something about Cheyenne that's different. He's so cocky and so sure of himself. And yet so all alone. And inside he knows it, too. No father, no mother. By the law. Why well, bet he's not guilty of half the things he's been accused of. I guess I just feel sorry for him. Eddie, you know what I've been thinking? What? Arthur, I think that kid had something to do with our cattle being rustled. Never yeah. happened before. I've been thinking the same as you. Yeah, what can we do? We can't prove anything. Mm -hmm. He was with me when it happened. Yeah. Ain't no use asking Ma to fire him because she wouldn't hear to it. Uh, you better tell him to just clear out. I want to talk to you. Your memory must be getting bad. Why? What are you driving at? You seem to have forgotten my warning about going straight. Oh, no, I haven't. You got nothing on me. I know I can't prove anything. But I also know that you know something about our cattle disappearing. I don't know any more about it than you do. I'm asking you to pack your things and leave. I get what's eating on you. You're jealous of that girl. You're mad because she thinks I'm a better man than you are. I'm going to play her for just what she is, a cheap flirt. Somebody got a lucky punch in there. I'll separate them. Separate them. I got them together. Get out of my way. Stop it. Stop it, I say, or I'll blow you to bits. What's the matter with you two? Fighting like wild Comanche Indians. I'm sorry. I must have lost my temper. And what in goodness name could make you lose your temper to this extent? Nothing. Nothing? Well, if it was for nothing you wrecked this bunkhouse, I'll give you a good reason to put it back in shape again. Because if you don't, I'll blow your heads off. Supper will be ready by the time you get through. Here's your gun, Ezra. <laughs> you sure need to stop them, all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was only bluffing. Before you have occasion to use it, better load it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kate, I don't mean to be butting into your business, but I, I believe you ought to get rid of the kid. Because he ain't no good. And there ain't no man alive could make a good egg out of a bad one. Don't tell me that, Ezra, because I don't believe it. I believe in the worst of us there's some good. And there's plenty of good in that boy. He can work for me forever if he wants to. Hmm. Kate, if you ever feel your head getting real hard, don't take it. Why? Because it's bound to be marble and it's liable to roll off. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Well, let's see. That's another fifteen hundred dollars to your account. <laughs> You're building up quite a sizable roll. Yeah, and I'm tearing down a sizable one, too. But when I get through with the old gal, she won't bother nobody. You can still got to work faster. Now, there's another 60 head of you cattle that's turned up missing. I tell you, Ma, somebody's trying to break you. Yeah, he's right, Kate. Somebody amongst us is tipping them rustlers off. Oh, it's nothing of the sort, Ezra. It's the way the territory is run. Too many crooked politicians. Ma's right. When people can vote and we become a state, all this will stop. Yeah, well, well, maybe it'll be too late then. There's at least 50 head down there. I've rounded out of the hills for you. Take them. We just lost 50 more head. We followed the tracks as far as we could and completely lost them at the river. It seems like when we're in one place, they always strike in another. <laughs> it sure has got me stumped. Cattle business used to be a pleasure. Now it's becoming a headache. got the stuff you ordered. Good. that stuff goes off, I'll be back at the ranch holding the old gal's yarn while she does her knitting. Eddie, did you tell the boys I can't keep them on the payroll any longer? Yes, I did. But they don't want to leave us. Said they wouldn't go now that you need them most. I expected that. But with most of the cattle rustled and all the water holes blown up, there's nothing left to go on. Yeah, I told them all that. They still want to stick around. I guess I'll have to talk to them myself. I'm worried about Ma. Yeah. Breaking her heart to have to let her boys go. Yeah, she's a grand old gal. But just as hard-headed as a mule. That's a peculiar looking knife you got there. Well, did you see that before? No, where'd you get it? 
Oh, I've been using it all the time. I had that for, oh, 20 years. There was only one, or one other one like it. And I bought them both at the same time. I give the other one to Ma's little boy. And I taught him to carve Indian heads just like that in there. <laughs> he was a smart little shaver. You see, he took to it just as fast as a rabbit to the brush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care whether Ma never gives me any money. I'm not going to leave her. She's given me a lot of things that money couldn't buy. Why, I'll never forget when I got bit by that copperhead and old Doc Gibbons said I wouldn't pull through. My Ma cried just like I was her own kid. Yeah, same with me. You remember when that old gray mule took a hatin' for me? Tried to kill me every time I went near him? Anybody else would have fired me, but not Ma. She got rid of the mule. What's eating on him? His conscience, I guess. What's the matter, Lee? Came over as soon as I got your message. Read this. How long are the citizens of Wyoming going to tolerate the way the territory is being run? When are they going to wake up to the advantages offered by the federal government of the United States? Soon there will be held a vote of the people to decide this important issue. Watch this column for dates and further details. She's broke, but she won't give up and she won't sell out. I think I've got an idea on how to at least shut her paper up. The job you hired me for is done. I'll take my money. There's one more little detail you must attend to before you can quit. You've got to put a stop to Mrs. Conway's newspaper. Listen, you two, I've strung along with you as far as I'm going to. The old gal's tired and without a penny. Even her spirit's broken. And that's all I'm going to do to her. But if she's allowed to publish her plight, it could cause too much sympathy and possibly bring on an investigation. Don't you realize, with this paper silenced, the pressure will be off. We're too near victory now to be exposed. Well, your job isn't completed until you've destroyed that paper. All right. But have my money ready in the morning, because I'm riding. Tell you that we ain't had an ounce of good luck since you took that giant kid on your wing. Oh, stop blaming him. We set a trap at your own suggestion, and while we're watching him, someone runs off with 50 head. That proves he's not doing it. Well, maybe he ain't doing all these things, but it's a cinch he's brought you bad luck. Now that my paper's gone, there's nothing left to fight with. Don't take it so hard. There are other people who'd like to see this territory become a state just as much as we would. And they're working just as hard. Kate. I still say that you'll never prosper till you get rid of that kid. He's bad medicine. I haven't much strength to fight you two, Ezra. I'll tell him to go. I'll spare you that. I'm leaving now. Cheyenne, wait. Ma doesn't really want you to go. Are those yours? Yeah. You mind telling me where you got them? I don't know exactly. Way back in my kid days someplace, somebody gave me the knife and taught me how to carve Indian heads. 
I've been doing it ever since. Been so long ago, I don't even remember who it was. I can tell you who it was. It was Ezra. He gave you that knife and taught you to carve when you were just a little kid. When you were Ma's own little boy. Before you became lost to her. Ma's boy? How do you know? By putting two and two together. There's only one other knife like that one. It belongs to Ezra. He carves Indian heads, too. Well, Ringo, Cheyenne Kid's work is finished. Yeah. And as much as I don't like him, he did all right. With Ma Conway beaten, it'll be a warning to others who want to organize this section of the territory. And we'll make a cleanup within the next year. Boss, how much did you pay the Cheyenne kid for his work? Well, uh, nothing, yeah. That's why we sent for you, Ringo. The kid's the only one who can cause us any trouble. So we put a price on his head. Do you want it? I can always use money. If what you've told me is true, you've been a tool for Landau and Dixon in breaking one of the finest women that ever lived. For the first time in my life, the truth's important to me. And I want you to believe it. Does Ma know I'm her son? No. Do me a favor and never tell her, Will. It would hurt her more to know. I'm not making any promises, Cheyenne. I'm gonna get back every cent she's lost. Need any help? You couldn't give it to me. Why don't you tell Ma that Cheyenne's her own boy? I'm leaving that up to you. I'm not going to see Ma hurt. Well, don't look at me. I ain't doing this to cause a like the kid any better. I still say he's no good. What's wrong, Eddie? What's the trouble? You're wearing your guns, Eddie. What is it? You never lied to me. What is it? Well, in time now, Ma. Vicky will tell you she's in the bunkhouse. I'm ready to ride. I'll take my money. I'll have to send it to you. I want it now. Oh, kid, be reasonable. Dixon can't draw all that money out of the bank. It wouldn't look right. When he says he'll send it to you, he means just that. His word's as good as gold. Not to me, it ain't. Then neither is yours. Hold it. Get on your horse and get out of town. Looks like you win.
We're still looking for him, boss. Do you think he got away? Nah, no, he's around here somewhere. Keep hunting. We'll warn the citizens to be on the lookout. Wait a minute. I came to get my money. What is this, a holdup? No. All I want is the money that's due me from Landau and Dixon. Hurry up. We want to warn all you folks. This Cheyenne kid is a desperate criminal. And if you have to shoot, shoot to kill. the kid off. Why them dirty low down poor cats? Somebody's got to get to it. We'll keep you covered. You couldn't shoot. There's Mars money. Keep them off of me. I got a little interest to collect. Turn around. For Ma? I've always tried to. And Vicky, she loves you. Oh, and will you do me a favor? Just name it. I was always told I'd die with my boots on and I want to fool them. Step them off for me, will you? A state of the Union, having met all the requirements of the federal government of the United States for admission to the Union on this date, Wyoming has been accepted as a recognized state. <laughs> well, Ma, it looks like you finally got your wish. 
Whoopee! Let's all go to town and celebrate! Yeah. That's what we'll do. You Come stay here. Wait a minute. Eddie, before you go, will you sing that for me? You know. In the night, let me rest with a blue sky for my ceiling. Till the wind's lullaby comes deep.